Well, it's been six long years since the last time I looked at these Faber-Castell pit markers. And so I wanted to revisit them and talk about my experiences over the past decade using these markers and especially some of the good qualities and maybe a few, a few pointers or things that, that I've come to find out about working with these markers. Now you can see there's a lot of different varieties when it comes to these markers. They're super fine, fine, extra fine, medium, bold. Uh, there's uh, calligraphy uh, markers when you talk about a pit marker. And then there's these a bullet nib and a soft chisel nib and just a whole ton of different kinds of markers you can buy in sort of the same color. But what I wanna focus on today is mostly on the brush markers. And I just wanna talk a little bit about my experiences with those, having used those over time. Now, all these are good and I've used all these and I especially love the, the calligraphy markers. And the ink is the same, it's, it's India ink. It's not alcohol based, it's pH balanced and, and incredibly light fast and will hold up over time. So you can be pretty assured that um, what you put down with these markers is gonna stick around for a good long time. The other thing is that they, they really hold up well, they're durable. Um, here's a set, I think, if you collected all the colors in the line, I think you'd have 60, 60 different markers. So today, th there's a picture behind the paper I'm cutting out of all of the markers I own. And today I thought I'd just swatch out the colors so you could actually see the colors that come out of these markers and sort of make your own decision on whether the colors kind of match the what you expect from the marker or not. Now, I will say right off the bat that some of these markers that I own are more than a decade old and the ink still comes out of them. They still work. If you store them horizontally the way they're shown in this picture, um, you know, or in a bag somewhere where they're just lying on their side, you're not going to have any problem with these markers or at least I haven't had any problem. Um, even there's been times when I haven't even closed the, the cap very tightly and then I'll go to open it like months later and it's still still good. I'm not saying you leave the cap off and let it dry out over months and months and months, but if you make a mistake and you leave the cap off, it's not usually the, the end of the world with these markers. They, they last quite a bit of time, they're very durable, and it's easy to click the cap. There's an audible click when you push the cap and it's all the way on, so you it helps you not forget. Um, but as you work through the markers, uh, if you're doing some drawing or whatever, just make sure at the end of your session that you go back and check the markers to make sure that the cap is on correctly because that keeps the air out and it keeps the, the pen from drying out. But all of these markers uh, are, are just excellent. I love the color that comes out of them. It's a little bit different from wet to dry. So you'll see it gets a little bit wetter. Uh, well, when it's wet, when it dries, it gets a little bit lighter. That's what I'm trying to say, a little bit lighter. Just a, maybe a tiny, tiny bit, hardly noticeable. And they come in a wide variety of these gray pens. There's uh, a master artist out there who uses Faber-Castell. I suggest that you follow him on Instagram. I'll put his name in the uh, description as well, but his name is Don Colley. And he's a great artist. I think Faber-Castell sponsors, or at least used to sponsor, um, Don's work and he traveled the country and sketch and and use their products and and especially these markers and he's just a, mar a master artist but really really good uh, with these markers so here you can see the little swat swatches up close kind of get an idea of of what these markers can do really good color variety um, they tend to like I said they tend to go towards the um, lighter shade after they dry a little bit, but it's still pretty, pretty great. Uh, you can see here, and I'm gonna go through sort of the the color palette as we go along here, and you'll you'll get a good look at at these pens and, and, and the colors we, you can put down with them. And then I'm gonna do a demonstration uh, with these, and maybe a, maybe I'll draw a face or something, but here I'm just gonna sketch out some, some spheres. These aren't perfect. I just wanna demonstrate to you kind of what happens when you use the markers in sort of a layer or glazing technique or use you know line over line type work with the markers 
I really like the brush markers. There's two types. I'm more happy with the regular brush marker than the soft brush marker. They make an SB, which is the soft. And I, for some reason, I don't have as, as, as much good luck with the softer tip markers, but I really have great luck with these regular brush markers. The, the, the tip just seems to be a little bit more rigid and it's nice and, and I enjoy it. Now in my last review, uh, which I'll post here as well. That was six years ago or so. Um, I, I talked about sort of the versatility of these markers and things like that. And, you know, looking back on that video, all that stuff still holds true, except that I think that they've just gotten better over time. I mean, the, the pigments are about the same. The, they seem to, the colors are about the same, but I, I think maybe the longevity of the marker itself or maybe the light fastness has improved. I don't know, but uh, for sure on that. But what it seems like to me is that the drawings I do may, and maybe this makes sense, the drawings I do more recently, um, the color is just a little bit more vibrant. Maybe that's just because they aged, but um, it seems to hold up pretty well, like I said, especially if you're going to do stuff in a sketchbook. If you're doing stuff in a sketchbook and it's never going to see the light of day, then you're going to be you're going to be absolutely fine and these aren't going to fade. If you stick any marker, watercolor, anything like that in direct sunlight, you may have issues with that over time where there's fading of, of the color. Because whether or not companies say their colors are 100% light fast, they, they tend not to be, there's nothing that's 100% light fast or it's going to last 100 years or anything like that. So, um, you know, markers are sort of for design. They tend to go with ephemeral work or work that's not going to be as permanent maybe but 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 they're good to use for sketching thumbnails even finished work it's all good and so i'm just, just sketching this person here from reference but i i just have to say faber castell puts out a great product they're they're highly invested in their quality they just do a tremendous job um producing really high quality art supplies and and so i gotta hand it to faber castell uh, for really hitting it out of the park with these. I love their watercolor markers as well, and I raved about those in a video several years ago. I may have to go back and do an update on those, but this is my collection of Faber-Castell markers, and I probably wouldn't have invested so much in them if I didn't love them so much. So great markers, good to use, highly recommend these, and uh, let me know if you have experience with them. All right, this is Marty Owings for owingsart.com. So long for now. Bye-bye.